Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Me, 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 me. La, 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 la. Oh, hey there, you little chicken nuggets. Oh, looks like you're a bit early, but that's okay. Right now, I'm in the middle of my vocal exercises. What's vocal exercise? That's a good question. It's like jumping jacks for your voice box. Like aerobics for your throat. I have some fun tongue twisters too. Watch this. Betty Botter brought some butter, but she had, but she said it was, but the butter's bitter. If I put it in the batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit a better butter will make my batter better. So twas better Betty Butter brought a bit of better butter. And here's another one. <clears throat> a skunk sat on a stump and thunk the stump stunk. But the stump thunk the skunk stunk. That's pretty easy to say if you ask me. Hey, bro, you ask yourself, Carl, why are you sitting in a cardboard fort and practicing tongue twisters and stuff? Well, kids, that is another good question. Your good friend and confidant is me, Carl. I'm gonna be in the theater. I'm gonna join a theater. A play, if you will. Exciting, right? Well, I guess I'm officially not in the play just yet. Apparently I have to go in an audition and even figure out if I got a part in the play. So I figured if y'all are cool with it, I'm gonna use this time as an opportunity to do my audition and show you what I can do. You cool with that? Awesome, let's do it. All right, good on, Mike. That's the crook guy over there. You see, the thing is that it doesn't matter if I'm here or there. This box is not big enough for the two of us. There's two things you need to know about me. One, I'm living in a box, and two, I like bowls of pudding. They may take our land, but they will never take our bowl of pudding. Oh, hi Grace. Hey, did you see all that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was incredible. You're definitely gonna get the part. You really think so? Oh, without a doubt, they're gonna love you. Well, thanks Grace. I, I guess I'm just kind of nervous about, mm, I don't know. About what? Well, I'm gonna be alone during the audition and I don't know, it's just, scary. Oh, yeah. Being alone can be very scary, but you don't have to worry about that. Really? Why? Because you're not alone. Um, not? Ah! Wait, what are you talking about, Grace? <laughs> Sorry, I guess I could explain. You've heard of Esther, right? <laughs> have I heard of Esther? <laughs> Have I heard of Esther? No, I actually haven't. Can you actually tell me more about Esther? Because I don't know. I would love to. Now, a long time ago, there was a king called Xerxes. That's a cool name. And King Xerxes was looking for a new queen. What happened to the old queen? Wait, was she old? <gasps> Did she die? No, no. She was forced to leave because she disobeyed the king. You see, back in those days, what Whatever the king said was law, and everyone had to do what the king said. Even the queen? Yep, even the queen. One night, King Xerxes wanted to show off how beautiful the queen was to his friends, but the queen refused to be treated like this. So the king's closest advisors told Xerxes they had to make an example out of her. So he kicked her out of the palace and began the search for a new queen. Whew, that's rough. So how'd they find the new queen? I bet it was a beauty contest. <clears throat> I've won my fair share of those before, so <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you have, but you're pretty much right. It was a beauty competition. The king was looking for someone even more beautiful than the previous queen, and maybe someone who won't question his orders. Interesting. Where I come from, uh, the homecoming queen is determined by who can spit a watermelon seed the furthest. Yeah? And what's the record? The homecoming queen nine years ago spit a watermelon seed 300 yards. It's wild. Wow, that's um pretty far. Well, the young ladies who were gathered didn't have to spit a watermelon seed. And from among the many, many women who appeared before the king, 
one girl in particular would be the one that God was looking for. Uh, you mean Xerxes, the king? Nope. I mean, the king did choose this new queen, but God had a major plan for her too. Esther? Is it Esther? <laughs> it sure was. Now, Esther's parents had passed away, but her cousin Mordecai had helped raise her and was a type of father figure to Esther. And when he found out she wanted to become queen, he supported her. But... But... But what? Mordecai told her to hide her identity as a Jewish woman. What was that? Well, the Jewish people had enemies, and if they found out Esther was Jewish, they might not allow her to even be given a chance to become queen. He was afraid something bad might happen to her. Oh, that makes sense. It was like for her safety. So she can't tell anyone she's Jewish. What an acting challenge. Exactly. Now, when Esther got ready and was standing before the people, Everyone liked her. They found her to be beautiful. And so then it was time to go in front of King Xerxes. Let her become queen. Let her get the part. Well, when he saw Esther for the first time, he couldn't believe it. He said she was the most beautiful of all the women. And then he did something amazing. He picked up a crown and placed it on Esther's head. She was now the queen of Persia. Woo, she did it. She got the part. She did it. She went in there, she acted, she did her part and bite. She's the queen lady now. The leading lady. The fact that she did this all by herself is just incredible. Well, hold up. That's not exactly true. What are you talking about? Well, obviously Mordecai helped her by keeping her safe. But there is someone working in the background. Background? Yeah, behind the scenes. Have any guesses? Is... is it God? It is God. You're right. But how is that possible? God wasn't mentioned once in this story. That's the thing I wanted to share with you, Carl. Just because we can't see or hear God doesn't mean that God isn't there. Really? Of course. God promises to be with us always. We may not see or hear God working, but this story wouldn't have happened without God making it happen. God loves us very much, but there are times in our lives where we feel alone and discouraged. It can be easy to give up and think that God has abandoned us, but that will never happen. Never? Never. So don't worry about being alone during your audition. God will be there with you. Through that and every moment after. Wow. Thanks, Grace. So does that mean because God works behind the scenes, I'm for sure going to get the part I'm auditioning for? Not necessarily. But you know what you did get? Our big idea. Hey, kids. I don't know about you, but I am so excited to see Carl finally understanding our big idea today. And that is God works behind the scenes. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. But while you do it, you have to stand up and act like you're getting a standing ovation. You know, like wave, put your hands together and shake them like this or give a bow. Ready? One, two, three. God works behind the scenes. <laughs> Great job, everybody. Now, make sure to tune in next week for Grow TV because I have a pretty good feeling Carl might get the part in the play. <gasps> no way! Told ya. See ya, kids, next week. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV.